Luffy may have finally met his match, because in this week's manga chapter of One Piece, Luffy, the captain of the Straw Hat Pirates, finally begins to throw down with Katakori Charlotte, the strongest of the three sweet commanders and the master of Mochi. This, for me personally, is the most hype One Piece manga chapter that I have ever read. Let me try and explain why. I love the One Piece franchise, but I was introduced to it not through the manga, but through the anime version, and I didn't decide to start reading the manga version until we got to the Dressrosa arc, which was very exciting, but I will say that the transition from anime to manga was very strange at first. It was something that I frankly didn't enjoy because I've always just considered the anime version of One Piece to be superior. However, the build-up for the battle with Luffy and Kata Corey has honestly had me at the edge of my seat every single week, and I have been anticipating this battle like you cannot believe. And this is just the beginning of their fight, and it is already so damned impressive. And yet, incredibly simple all at the same time. I mean, Katakori's abilities overall are strikingly similar to Luffy's. They're damn near the same. But that's what's so unique about this battle, because Luffy's going to be fighting against someone who has abilities which are damn near similar to his, and he's going to have to overcome them. And at the end of this week's chapter, it seems like it's going to be one hell of a challenge, because Katakori's power seems damn near insurmountable. So let's talk about some of the big highlights of this week's chapter chapter, which was really simple. Basically, everybody just panicking over the fact that Luffy has been left behind, Jinbei and the crew are freaking out that Pedro just exploded, and Big Mom is walking on the ocean thanks to the powers of Pero Sparrow's ability to use candy. Not only has he fixed his arm, but he's also created a massive sea slug out of candy, which is allowing Big Mom to just walk casually across the ocean and continue to freak everybody out with her shrieking wedding cake at the top of her lungs. It's a really great scene because it shows just how panicked the Straw Hat Pirates are and how they're all grieving over the death of Pedro. This is really important because I'm pretty sure Pedro's not going to be coming back, and Jinbei makes that very clear to them. He also needs to remind them that they are in the middle of a situation where they cannot let their emotion show, they cannot cry, they're going to have to suck it up if they're going to want to escape. The best way to actually honor Pedro's life is to do what he said. Get the hell out of Dodge, save your friends, and make it out of Big Mom's territory. Jinbei's basically just being a realist during the scene, but he's also just really trying to hammer in the fact that he's a super experienced pirate, he has been through some really crazy shit, and this is the only way that they're going to get out of this situation alive. They need to honor Pedro, trust their captain, and get the hell out of there. This scene right here, at first, I didn't really care for it because I felt that it was just padding out for time for the battle between Luffy and Katakori, but it really hammered home the fact that Pedro made the ultimate sacrifice, and it makes me appreciate his character all the more, despite the fact that he really didn't do that much and didn't really have as much development as I would like, yet he's going to leave one hell of a massive impact on the characters. You can see it in their faces, just the way that they're talking. Carrot can, can't even like bring herself to talk, she's so upset, and she looks so sad and disturbed in this chapter that you just want to be there for her, and then when they finally just decide to pump themselves up and make their quick escape. She jumps up back into the crow's nest and goes back to doing what she does, and she sees the horror that is Big Mom in Pero Sparrow. And you can see that it almost sort of pumps her up a bit as they're almost sort of preparing for this epic battle. Pero Sparrow also being able to heal his arm with his candy makes sense. We've seen a number of characters in the series who've done similar things, just like Aokiji the Iceman. So it does make sense that he'd be able to do that. But I do like the fact that he comments that he's never going to be able to hold his cup of hot tea in the afternoon because it's going to continuously melt his hand. But who cares? He could just keep making candy arms. I guess it's just kind of annoying because it's going to be sticky as shit, so that's kind of gross. But still, he seems to be taking and losing his hand in stride, which is always something that's kind of creepy about Pero Sparrow. The middle parts of the chapter are something that, honestly, I didn't care about that much, and it's the only scene that I really would have to nitpick about, but really, it doesn't take away from my love of this chapter. It's basically just... Sanji and Pudding and Chiffon who are just continuing to fly on the magic carpet. And it's basically just showing that the 
relationship between Sanji and Pudding is just kind of poisonous, to say the least, especially because Pudding is constantly switching between her two different personalities. And then there's the battle between Luffy and Katakori, and the only way that this battle could be any better is if there wasn't any freaking bystanders watching. This is just a minor nitpick, and it's something that I almost wanted to make a video about. I hate how many side characters there are in One Piece. I do like a lot of them, especially the ones that are important. But it seems like every single battle, there's always like a hundred people watching, and we just need them there to shout a bunch of nonsense and to just state the obvious. And I was sort of hoping that Katakori and Luffy would be in the mirror world by themselves with no distractions just so that they could throw down. The good thing is I don't think these guys are going to be really doing that much outside of just being freaked out over the extreme power of Katakori, but still... The rest of the chapter is just both Katakori and Luffy trading punches, trading kicks, and Katakori seemingly not being affected by any of it. And Luffy pulls out all the stops, using a lot of classic techniques like his Gatling-styled attacks and even his kicks, but Katakori is able to one-up him in just about every single way. With the first one, he's actually able to multiply his arms thanks to his Logia-styled powers, and this allows him to basically do what Luffy's doing, just with way more arms, which makes him all the more destructive. Luffy decides to kick him. What does Katakori do? He freaking teleports and kicks him right into the jaw! And then we have the final scene, where they had the elephant gun-style techniques, the two giant fists slamming into each other, which are covered in the armament hockey. And Katakori doesn't even flinch, he doesn't even break a sweat, and his arm and hand is way bigger than Luffy's. Basically, he's able to match everything Luffy does, just with a lot more gusto and power behind it. And that makes him all the more disturbing, especially the fact that he doesn't seem to be bothered by the battle at all, and almost seems to be getting off on it. This is going to be awesome. So what's the rundown on this week's chapter of One Piece? What more can I say? It was just a really well-handled chapter, especially the first half and the last half. Luffy versus Katakori is just awesome, in my opinion, in every single way. And if I had to choose, like, a favorite scene, I don't want to say it's the final panel, but something about that one scene where Katakori was able to teleport and kick Luffy in the face just felt so real and raw, even for, like, the One Piece series. Like, for him to actually be able to teleport like that... And Luffy is really going to have to do something crazy to overcome this guy's abilities, because one, he can one-up him in terms of the physical strength, but Katakori, of course, also has that unique ability to see into the future a little bit, so Luffy's going to have to get very creative with how he's going to attack him. Really, I think we're all just waiting for Gear 4 to appear at just like any second. We know it's coming, and we know it's going to be insane, but... Clearly, Katakori is uh, sort of pulling his punches a little bit, and he's probably hiding some big secret as well. So I can only imagine how crazy this mirror world is about to get rocked by these guys' epic battle. It's great stuff, and I love how they're building it up. Other than that, I love the visuals in the first half of the chapter with Paris Sparrow and Big Mom crossing the ocean with a giant sea slug. I just love the overall design of that and the fact that Big Mom is still just continuing to go after them, even with all of this crazy shit going on. She's like a frigging serial killer. She's Michael Myers, just with pink hair and she likes to sing a lot. You don't want to mess with this woman. She's going to fuck you up. Para Sparrow also has turned into one of my favorite villains from this arc. Not as powerful as, say, Katakori, but his overall personality is just so sadistic and malicious that he's a really fun, evil character to read and look at. And then there's the stuff in the middle, which is basically just more of the same as they prepare to make this cake and try to rendezvous with the other members of the Straw Hat crew. Really, this was a solid package. This was a great chapter of One Piece, and Jinbei has really proved that he's going to be very instrumental in toughening up the crew, and Luffy versus Katakori, I mean, come on, guys. It was awesome, and this is just the beginning of the battle. I'm giving this chapter a 5 out of 5. I loved it, but I want to hear from you guys. Make sure to tell me what you thought about this week's chapter of One Piece in the comments section below, and what you hope to see from the epic battle between Luffy and Katakori. What are your theories about how this battle is going to go down? How is Luffy going to be able to stop his incredible raw power? Will Sanji and them make the cake in time? Will the Straw Hats escape with their lives? Tell me all your theories and what you hope to see in the comments section below. Thank you all again for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for all things One Piece related. Make sure to share this video with your friends. Maybe even give the video a thumbs up. It's super easy to do. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you again, and as always, stay damn damn, baby.